And if you say something that you don't want out there, then we don't put it out. <laughs> yeah. So, or I edit it out, but I'm a no, bad but... editor. <laughs> so you grew up as a Christian. Yeah. So um, my parents are Christians um, and are still together. And I've got three younger brothers and they're Christians and they're all married now. Um, and so, uh, yeah, I grew up in a Christian family, um, always went to church, um, Christian school. Um, and yeah, for the first, first 15 years, um, I was at, um, I went to my parents' church, which was a little tiny, um, open brethren. So, um, sort of fairly conservative, but not, not ultra conservative, but fairly conservative. Um, probably small in that there's probably about 50 people. Um, and then when I was about 15, um, the charismatic sort of Toronto blessing sort of swept through the world. Really? Yeah. That's and as, as a shy sort of, um, with, you know, um, not out introverted young boy, um, you know, it was just very, the whole, um, you know, speaking in tongues and stuff was just, uh, it was just the last thing that I could, um, you know, I, I didn't want to go up for an altar call. <laughs> um, and so I, I found it very um, challenging. And so I, I went and found a conservative um, church in the city and, um, and it was a Presbyterian church. Um, and so I, went to a conservative Presbyterian church for about 15 years. Um, and then I moved to um, a Christian Reformed church uh, for about 18 months. And then I ended up back at my parents' church <laughs> after <laughs> that. And that's, that's where I've been since. So it's, it's, it's been a, a journey out and then back. Um, but yeah, my, my parents' church is, um, is a lot more mainstream now. Um, so the, the, um, I guess the, the Pentecostal wave swept through and because the church wasn't prepared to go super Pentecostal, you know, the people who wanted that kind of thing have, have moved on. Um, and it's back down to, you know, it swelled up to 150 people and then it's down to back down to 50. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, so. But yeah, it's it's a, a sensible little church, you know. Um, they put a lot of effort into to Bible preaching um, and high participation. So one of the things which is good about the Open Brethren is, you know, they encourage people to participate, um, to volunteer, um, to be involved, and you know, so that's 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 good. I think most of the time, you know, occasionally you get, you know. When you invite people to participate, sometimes you get uh, funny things happen. But most of the time, ninety percent of the time, it's it's good um, and helpful. I find so. Hmm. Do you live in a rural area or an urban area? Well, Tasmania, the state that I live in, is technically the whole state is pretty much rural. Like um, we've only got so we're about a third of the size of England, but we only have about five hundred thousand people. So. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> so that's apart from, rural <laughs> and you know the two the, the capital city and the other city i think about half the population of tassie um tasmania is in those two cities so you know you only have to go for about 20 minutes and you're out in the bush and um you know it's it's quite you know a third of the of the state is wilderness so okay, okay. um yeah it's 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 you know a beautiful state, lots of natural beauty, um, and um, you know I, I grew up sort of on a, a five a six acre block out in the up in the hills. So you know spent a lot of time out in the bush, out in the creek, and you know just running around and yeah. So I sort of grew up in that kind of environment. But hmm. sounds like a great place to grow up. Yeah, yeah. Looking back, you know, we had, we had a lot of freedom and to just go out and explore. And our my parents were very, um, you know, allowed us to do that, and um, which was a great blessing. So, so mm. how'd you first hear about Jordan Peterson? Yeah, um, a friend posted it on my Facebook wall, and 
um, one of his videos and I was sort of like, oh, okay. And so, you know, I checked it out and I was like, hmm, this guy is quite interesting. I think it was the Queen's debate where um, it started off with his friend, lawyer friend, oh, I can't remember his name. Um, and, you know, he made a case and you go, oh, yeah, that sort of seems reasonable. And then Jordan Peterson gets up and you're like, who is this guy? He's, you know, he's, he's a bit wild and you think, man, um, you know, a little bit, you know, crazy. And But after a few minutes you go, oh, my goodness, he just absolutely demolished um, the argument and you're left sort of just going, oh, my goodness. And so, you know, after w- watching one of them, you go, well, who is this guy? And you sort of start, you know, searching around and, I, uh, at one stage, I was probably listening to probably over an hour a day, probably for oh, probably for six months, I reckon. Um, <laughs> you know, just going through podcasts and videos, and so it's it's quite. After I w- went and actually met um, him in Sydney, um, so there was an event. He came to over to Australia, um, and uh, I went along. You know, after that, I sort of, um, you know, I'm down probably more like an hour a week, um, more now. I'm sort of, I'm, I'm You're sort on of, a maintenance I'm, dosage. Yeah, <laughs> just, just, keep, just keeping an eye on what he's up to. I'm really keen to, um, for the Exodus series, I guess. Like, I, I want to see him explore sort of new territory. Like, um, and like, and I appreciate the fact that you know he needs he he needs to like going around touring and with his book and introducing a lot of people to sort of, I guess the fundamentals of his, what, you know, he, you know, the order chaos, you know, living in between those two extremes, you know, trying to be responsible, trying to find meaning as opposed to chasing happiness, you know, all of those kind of fundamental things, you know, it's, you know, it's excellent that that's getting out and he's able to engage people sort of almost one-on-one in the, those lectures. Um, and so, you know, I am, uh, that's great. But as you said, in what I think it was your, you know, has Jordan um, peaked or whatever. Um, there's a, quite a few of us who are sort of just, just wait until he, you know, gets out and explores some, some new, new territory. Um, so yeah, that's sort of, sort of where I'm at. And, you know, keeping an eye on your videos to, to see if he's breaking new territory and, um, <laughs> you know, it's, it's a good way of keeping the finger on, on the pulse. Um, I watch for you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's great. <laughs> yeah, no, it's appreciated. Um, so, so as a, so, what do you do for a living? Yeah, look, I'm an IT manager, um, okay. which my, my my it's not my passion. It's not you know my heart's not in it. Uh, in you know I I do it because it's something which I find, you know, it's something that just comes naturally. It's sort of like you know I I've always been fairly good with computers and so whilst I was doing my university degree I you know I was you know also working part-time um sort of doing computer consultancy and the people I was consulting with um wanted me more and more hours and eventually they just employed me full-time and so it sort of it was something I sort of just you know that's where I ended up as opposed to um something I was sort of aiming for um, so at the moment, it's more tent making that, you know, I work in IT so that I can, you know, spend time blogging and <laughs> okay. reading and, um, you know, doing other things, which, which I find more meaningful. Okay. Um, so, so in March, you did write a blog that, yeah. that got some, that got some attention, got my yeah, attention. Was- I found it. <laughs> that was sort of the peak of, 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 of you. Um, that was your peak. <laughs> yeah. Um, oh, it was funny actually, cause I had, um, I went up to, to Sydney, um, for the Jordan Peterson, um, lecture. And when I, like, I, I go back a little bit before I went up there, I'd been sort of engaging with Jordan Peterson. Uh, I'd written a few blog posts on him. Um, the eternity, um, newspaper, which is Australia's largest Christian newspaper kind of organisation, uh, media organisation, they'd written a piece on Jordan Peterson about masculinity and stuff, and I, I just felt it really missed the mark on a, a number of points. And so, I'd written some, I'd gone through sort of you know line by line and given them feedback about where I thought they'd misunderstood and stuff, and I didn't get any response back from it. 
And I was like, uh, oh, well, you know, I tried. Um, but when I landed um, in Sydney, I got a, a message from the Eternity newspaper saying, oh, look, are you going to the Jordan Peterson event? And I was like, oh, of course. And um, they said, oh, well, could you write a piece about that? And so I was like, oh, okay, sure. <laughs> Obviously, that would be awesome. Um, and so I, you know, I had very short time to, to write it. And so I started because, you know, I'd, I'd have a meetings and stuff organized when I was in Sydney. Um, so it was sort of like, you know, squeezed it in. Um, and uh, yeah, that, that's sort of how that came to be. Um, they sort of wanted to know, you know, should Christians actually take any notice of Jordan Peterson um, as well as, you know, a bit of a feedback on, on how the actual um, event went. Um, so, yeah, um, and the, the added complication was whilst I was in, I was in Sydney for three days and um, my lung collapsed. Like, I didn't realise at the time, but um, my lung collapsed. And so I was sort of in, in significant pain as I was trying to write this, this article. I was like, this opportunity, I can't let this opportunity go. Um, but, you know, one of, half of my lung, my um, left lung, I think it was, yeah, no, my right, my right lung had collapsed. And I, had, I didn't realise this. I was just, you know, in, had a significant pain, but I was sort of, you know, travelling across, walking across Sydney and I'd have to stop every 100 metres because it was just, you know, to just, I was like, oh, this is really inconvenient. So I, you know, took some painkillers and went to Eternity newspaper and said, you know, you know, I was trying to work out exactly what kind of article they wanted. And so I ended up writing most of the article in, in pain, which was sort of this real strange kind of contrast between, you know, this wonderful opportunity to write and also this sort of, you know, doing it in, in, in a state of, you know, in, yeah, in pain basically. And so it was very bizarre. And so when Jordan Peterson actually tweeted my article, I was in hospital at the time <laughs> trying to engage with all these comments on the, on the, on the Twitter from my hospital bed. And it was, <laughs> it was just, this, it was, it was surreal because it was sort of like, uh, it was this, this contrast between sort of the, the, five minutes of fame and also, you know, being in hospital. And so it was just, it was completely surreal. Um, it was a surreal 10 days of just nuts. Like it was very crazy. So, wow. but yeah, that's, that's how that sort of, um, yeah, came to be that, that article just out of nowhere, just, you know, appeared um, this opportunity. And, and I, and, and I was also lucky when I was, um, or fortunate when I was at the Jordan Peterson event, I, the microphone, one of the microphones was right next to my shoulder. So you know, when question time came, you know, I literally stood up, took one step and, you know, I got to ask the third question and, you know, he only got through about five questions that night. Yeah. So it was sort of very providential that I, I happened to be um, next to a microphone. So I got three minutes of talking to Jordan Peterson, which okay. was again, surreal. Um, kind of experience so have um, your thoughts changed since march when you wrote the piece um I, I still i still think he's um i still think no, I, I still think he's 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 on a journey like i i don't think he's fully um i don't think he's fully um worked out how to grace uh, i think grace is still something he's still sort of trying to, to figure out like, so I, I think, I think he's realized like the prodigal son, like that, I find that uh, illustration very helpful in that, you know, he's realized that chasing hedonism, chasing, you know, um, what expedient, um, what is sort of, you know, chasing happiness is, instead of what yeah. Is yeah. Is, you know, so just chasing after sort of happiness is, is, is not the solution. Um, and he, he, he's got an inkling of, you know, that God's out there, but he's not entirely sure who God is. And, you know, so he's looking for God, like he's trying to find his way home and he's still sort of on that path. Um, so, you know, obviously lots of very helpful things to say, you know, because he's, you know, he's already traveled a long way along that journey. Um, but I still think, you know, he hasn't really experienced that kind of, um, you know, the grace, the forgiveness, the, the embrace, if you, if you like, of, of God. Um, I'm still quite optimistic that he'll, if he keeps reading and studying the Bible and keeps engaging with Christians, like 
I'm sort of optimistic that, well, you know, he's, he's pursuing the truth. He's trying to find what is true. And so, you know, God is the God of, of truth. So for me, it feels like the current trajectory is, it's just a matter of time. You know, it's just, if, if he keeps, you know, chasing this and doesn't get overwhelmed by celebrity status, then, you know, I, I feel that, you know, he will, he, you know, God will honour that um, pursuit of him. I, I kind of feel like so. You know, it's hard. You know, hard to say with things. It could be five. It could be ten. You know, ten years. You know, you don't. It's just. It's really hard to know. Um, you know, he, he's certainly. He's not. A, he's not just rushing into things. He's not just sort of going. Oh well. You know, I'm just going to take this big leap of faith and just say that God's real. And you know, until he kind of feels that he's found him, he's not going to just pretend that he's found him. He's very open and honest about all that, um, which is good. You know, he's bringing, he's bringing people on that journey of, of trying to find God. And I think that's one of the things which is so appealing is that he speaks, you know, he speaks what he, he's very honest. He's, he's very um, transparent and, you know, he's not just trying to say what people want him to say. He's, he's trying to say what he believes is true. And, uh, um, you know, so that's, you know, that's one of the reasons he's so fascinating, I guess. Um, so yeah. part of, so part of the videos I've been doing lately, I mean, when you say, uh, he believes that God is real in what sense do you mean real when you say that? Yeah, look, I think, so I, I think as, as you said in, in, um, your one, that was one of the ones I, one of the reasons I wanted to talk to you because the God number one and God number two. Yeah. So God number one, you know, he, he obviously thinks that there's some sort of transcendent, some sort of, you know, if you like power out there, some sort of, you know, creator kind of, you know, some sort of force, you know, he believes in some sort of divinity, some sort of transcendence, some sort of, but in terms of which personal, you know, if it's a personal deity, you know, you know, in terms of God, as in Jesus, the Trinity, you know, in God, number one, I, I think he's got an inkling that there's something there, but he's just not sure and not confident and sort of, I guess like the prodigal son had a vague inkling that his father was, you know, would at least hire him as a servant, as a slave, you know, so he had some sort of, you know, inkling that his father wasn't, you know, a tyrant, but, you know, you, you couldn't say that the prodigal son, when he was in the, pig pen had a good understanding of the father like he didn't you know he was like i know that you know there's some you know the father's out there and he's he's not a complete tyrant maybe i'll, I'll sneak in and you know kind of thing so i think jordan p is sort of this inkling that it's sort of like he can't let it go like he he can't just go oh well obviously you know there's no god no he can't he can't say that um but at the same time he doesn't you know so it's sort of this sort of um I think, yeah, he's sort of, I think he's got an inkling that there's something out there. He's just not sure what. And that's sort of my feeling that, and that's why he can't, he can't sort of let it go. He just keeps sort of, it's sort of tugging at him. Um, and yeah, so that's sort of where I think sort of he's at. I, you know, when I, when I use God number, it's, it's terribly hard to talk about this stuff with precision, <laughs> communicate nah. this stuff because yeah. everyone has, this is one thing you learn as a pastor over a long time that if you say what, what happens as a pastor is if you keep saying the words that everyone is conditioned to hearing, mm. nobody hears anything. <laughs> and it's just true. And, and yeah. all then, all then what happens in church is that people come and they hear all the words they're used to hearing and they get mm. a sense of comfort and peace mm -hmm. and stability that we're hearing all the right words and we're healing all the same answers to all the same questions. So everything is okay. But, yeah. but when I talk about God kind of sense number one, mm. it's not even necessarily so much the, that, that's, that's a God I often in my earlier videos would put in quotation marks in mm. the sense that, this is this it's really a it's really a question about ontology between god sense mm -hmm. number 1 and god sense number 2 god sense number 1 could be pantheism but but mm -hmm. again now one of the things that i think when secular people kind of like the idea of pantheism it's because they're comfortable with they're comfortable with materiality 
but they mm. can see that there are other aspects to things like math mm. or relationships or some of those things. So, mm. so when I listen to Peterson talk about God in, in the God sense number one, it's, it's mm. usually the, the God that plays in terms of our relationships back and forth mm. that, that mm. so when so let's imagine so let's let's imagine a materialistic materialistic conception of the world but peterson says well we learn to sacrifice well what does that mean well we learn to um, delay gratification and mm. then we watched those who delayed gratification succeed mm. now that was expressed in the act of sacrifice but the key the key move happened psychologically and then mm. ourselves watching each other learn that psychologically that then became God, but it's a, it's a psychologically functioning God. Mm. And the, the line that the, the, those on those like Sam Harris really want to draw is that mm. there isn't, there isn't another non-human agent who can mm. actually move a pen yeah. or that can actually, so if you read C.S. Lewis's miracles, that can actually, you know, C.S. Lewis has this great illustration where he has a drawer and there are, he knows that there are like five pennies in there. And when he, when he opens the drawer again, there's only three pennies. And so he knows some agent moved two pennies. Mm. God number two is capable of removing pennies. God yeah. number one is not. Yeah. And, and so yeah. this is the sense of, of Peterson that he's, he's very sure. And I think he, I think he really, I, I think he really bests, bests Sam Harris in saying, you cannot deny God number one. Psychologically, mm. functionally in our midst, this mm. psychological entity has mm a real place in shaping humanity and has gotten into the evolutionary stream. And, and even, even Brett Weinstein would agree with God sense. Number one, it's yeah. God sense. Number two, where yeah. a God could take pennies out of the drawer or multiply loaves and fish or turn water to wine. Mm. This is where they draw the line. And yeah. that is the God that, and, and C.S. Lewis describes that as kind of, pantheism versus the hunter the lover the warrior mm. and yeah. so i i think that's that's kind of the line that so mm. peterson says i know there's god sense number one i'm open to number two and yeah. sam harris basically says no you shouldn't be <laughs> well, there's, a, there's a little yeah. two minute two minute there's a two minute condensation of hours of video <laughs> yeah 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 exactly that, I don't know I don't if think, it's clear through my videos because it's interesting mm. when I'm having these kind of conversations and people talk about it. What I find is that if I'm talking to another real life human being, I'm much better capable to just kind of mm. bring yeah. it in. Yeah, yeah no, look, I, I think you're right because I think most people are sort of comfortable with some sort of spirituality, you know. That's sort of the, you know, it's not, not religion. You don't have to follow rules, but there's just some sort of spirituality that there's something more than just the material that there's, you know, spirituality, it's sort of this, you know, you know, you do a bit of yoga and you do a bit of this and, you know, it's a bit of mindfulness, something a bit, you know, a that, bit of mindfulness, you know, I to, you know just to you make your life more rounded and more, you know, <laughs> it, it's, yeah. And so I think a lot of people are sort of open to that, but it, it's, it's when you start sort of going, okay, well, I think there's actually a, a relation, you can have a relationship um, with a, a being who can, reveal himself and interact with the world and has has been interacting with the world and intends to continue to interact with the world and that we have hope in what he's going to do and you know things like that and that's um yes it's 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 crossing the line into into something um a lot more yeah it's, it's yeah as you say it's it's not just pantheism it's not just sort of a a vague, you know, force behind the universe. It's, it's an actual being. Um, yeah. Yeah. Well, and, and, and I think part of what has happened in, you know, I talk about Chuck Colson, who was an American who 
went mm. to went to you know went to jail because of he what he did in the Nixon administration and his and his yeah. his book Born Again is really quite a gripping read, mm. but what what kind of seemed uh, seemed to happen in that a lot of evangelical churches. God, number one, the God who is the author, yeah, God made the world, but there isn't a sense of, you know, the ancients had very much had a sense of God, number one, and, and mm. different polytheists, you know, the gods acting, they weren't averse to that. But, and that's why I think Sam Harris and others, well, you know, I'm, when we say God, we don't mean number one. And, and that's where I really want to say, ah, uh, yeah, we do mean number one. And we need mean sense number two. We really mean both senses. And yeah, well, really at least Christian, Christ, Christ, that's where Christians are at. Christians, that's right. And, that's right. And and Muslims, and yep. I, I, I think most Jews are probably at the, the same kind of thing. It's sort of like, you know, we it's it's we believe in a, a well both. You know, we don't just believe in a entity who has no sort of influence over. Every, you know all of reality we sort of mean some we yeah we mean both as, as you say yeah. you know we, we, we don't just mean one or the other this um, isn't this isn't just a wandering god who looked down and said oh wow look at this world there's people i'm gonna start poking yeah. around <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> he's the yeah. author from the beginning he's yeah. he's tolkien to frodo and yeah you know, so on yeah. and so forth yeah no that's no, no, a helpful way of, of, of conceiving it because Otherwise, you end up with like God, who's you know Father Christmas. It's sort of like he's just yep. another 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 person like us, just you know with a few superpowers, and yep. you know or, or Zeus, I guess, or you know one of those kind of gods who is just a powerful human, really. Yep. Um, whereas we say no, no, he he is a being, he has got personality, but he also has a lot more. Like you know, he's got all of God number one attributes as well as as being. Um, you know, in, in, in some way, well, we're like God, I guess, in, in the sense that, you know, we are agents to some degree. Um, um, which reminds me, your, one of the things I was quite interested about was um, your compatibilism um, idea. Um, because, look, because, you know, I obviously grew up in a, because I grew up in a Presbyterian, a conservative Presbyterian church for, um, who are Calvinists, and then, you know, the Reformed church was, obviously Calvinist again. Um, and so uh, sort of, you know, I grew up in that kind of environment, although my parents, my parents um, read both of the teachers. And so, you know, they read to us every night. And so, you know, we, they m must have read the, you know, the Narnian series, maybe six or seven times to us over the years. And, you know, again, Tolkien. So they read all the Tolkien ones, um, George MacDonald, um, you know, a number of, of those kind of um, authors. So a lot of, you know, so I had the influence of, of, of Lewis in there as well as um, sort of the Calvinism thing. And so when I sort of came across um, compatibilism, that sort of in, in many ways, because you said it in, in, I think it was your last video, you sort of say, look, the Bible tries to have it both ways, it appears. Like, you know, sometimes... It's like, you know, we fear and trembling, work out your salvation for it is God who works to, um, within you to will and to um, bring about his purpose, something like that. So, you know, on one hand, you know, that's pretty much summarizes up. And on one, from our perspective, you know, I'm trying to work out my salvation, you know, seriously. Um, but at the same time, God is working. It. <laughs> and so it's sort of like, and so the whole free will versus determinism, like I am not agnostic about it. It's just like, I don't see it. It feels like the Bible is, is promoting both at the same time that it's sort of saying, well, you, you, you know, you do, you know, you do need to work out your salvation with fear and trembling. You know, you've got to take this seriously and try and figure it out. But at the same time, you've got to be, you know, realize that, you know, God isn't just sitting on his hands, you know, just watching, you know, waiting to see what you'll do. He, God is out there doing stuff and he's, you know, um, yeah interacting um and guiding and you know and that god will bring about his purposes you know if you know if god wants you know jordan peterson to be saved then jordan peterson will be saved there's there's no you know jordan peterson's not going to be out 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 with him and so you know well, c.s lewis you know saying you know he said look i felt that you know i was pretty much in a wrestling match with god and 
God won out. And that was brilliant. He's, you know, his whole conversion was, um, you know, he, he was like, you know, I was reluctant. Um, but in the end, you know, it was the, the best choice I ever made. Although, you know, God was dragging me in. <laughs> and yeah. so, you know, you can tell in his yeah. conversion that he's wrestling with this thing. He's sort of saying, on the one hand, you know, I was making the choice. But on the other hand, I couldn't make any other choice. <laughs> like, like yeah. I, I, yeah. I couldn't have, you know, it was the, it was so the evident, well, the, it was just overwhelming. You know, it, it was just sort of like, you know, this is the only rational, only rational choice I can make. You know, it's yeah. the only, um, yeah, you know, and so it's, it's sort of, I guess, I guess the, the, one of the ways which, doesn't quite in, entirely work as an analogy. The chess game kind of thing, where it's sort of like, even if even if God doesn't, um, and you know, pr- pretty much, even if even if God didn't determine um, your moves, you know, when you play chess against God, God always wins. Like in, in terms of, you, and you know, He doesn't have to manipulate the situation. He just says, okay, let's have a game of chess, and He will win. He will always win, and and so, you know, the, the outcome, you know, God will always get the outcome that he is seeking, um, even if we make free moves along the way. And so, you know, even at that extreme, you know, if you say, oh, well, God doesn't determine things. Well, you go, well, does God determine the outcome of that chess game or not? Well, on one sense, you know what the outcome is going to be. Like, there's, there's no, no question that God's going to win or not. Um, and... But then you say, oh, well, does that mean that God is making you do each move? And you go, well, it doesn't, not necessarily. It could be, but it, you know, it, 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 you know what I mean? It's, it's, and so I, I find that sort of, I don't know, it's, it's sort of, I've heard, I've, it's one of those things where you sort of, um, you've probably had plenty of debates about free will versus determinism. It's sort of one of those things where you can debate it for hours and hours into the night and, um, it's hard, you know, you, you, you kind of left with this sort of thing like, well, you can't, God can't be, God doesn't sit on his hands. So it can't be completely non-determinism, you know, that God is complete. But then, it, you know, if it's complete determinism, then you're, where you're robots, then that doesn't kind of, you know, then it's sort of like, well, why do you say work out your salvation with fear? And so, you know, so you, so you sort of end up in this sort of middle ground um, often. Um, yeah. Oh, yeah. Anyway, I, I, what, sorry. You, yeah, I don't know that. I don't know that this is. There, there are a variety of reasons why I think. I, I'm skeptical that this is something that we can actually answer. Mm, one, exactly. one of the issues is. How how, how does God exercise agency, mm. in this, uh, manifest image that we tell our stories within part of the problem is, I mean, even if you look at, you know, the, the Don Hoffman stuff that I've looked at, I mean, our, our grasp on our grasp on quote unquote reality is (laughs) is not real good to begin with. Yeah. And, Yeah. And so here we have consciousness and I'm experiencing this and Jordan Peterson plays the, the gorilla, you know, the, the gorilla walking through the basketball yeah. uh, passing thing, and you begin yeah. to realize, you know, <laughs> oh, wow, I'm, I'm really selective at what I pay attention to. And it has to be that way because I've, I've got severely limiting processing power, especially yeah. within the fraction of my mind that is my conscious mind. So, mm. so there's one limitation. The next limitation yeah. is memory. And the more we learn about memory, the more we learn how, how fallible it is that, mm. you know, in many ways, I, you know, we remember things that we have photographs of, and it's like, well, there's a little bias. And, mm. you know, even just, you know, I'm, I'm 55 this year, and I've been married to my wife for 30 years. And when we talk about, you know, now we have a fair amount of past, and we have five children. So here are seven witnesses to a lot of things. And regularly, I will remember things that she has no (laughs) recollection of. She will remember things that I have no recollection of. And Mm. what we know about memory, probably all of those memories are fairly doctored. 
So yeah. then we're going to try to say, well, you know, God, that then we have all these impressions and Christians, you know, obviously Christians who believe in a fair bust, uh, God number two aspect mm. say, well, that was Providence God working in my life. And that's attached to memory. And so, <laughs> we, we, you know, we, what, what that leads me to is a, is a healthy skepticism about mm. our ability to account even mm. for what we are able to do. Because yeah. even in looking at myself, um, the decisions I make are, are so often so predictable. And mm. I don't experience that myself, but Not I experience that with others. Yeah. <laughs> I watch my kids and I watch them and I think, they're going to go there. You know, my kids, you know, when they picked college, it's like, I want them to go there, but they were going to go there. Like my, my last son, I, I really wanted him to go to Calvin College, which was my alma mater, my wife's alma mater. It's in western Michigan, which is dry, gray and cold most of the year. And he chooses to go to UC Santa Cruz, which is overlooking the Pacific Ocean on this beautiful Redwood Mountain you know, the weather all winter long is gorgeous. It's mm -hmm. like, you know, why do we let 18 year olds decide anything? <laughs> now here I'm bound by my culture and not yeah. wanting to be a tyrant. And so, so I've got a, I've got a healthy skepticism about our agency. Now I am yeah. not a determinist mm. That let's say from the Big Bang on, everything is simply developed by physics. I'm not a materialist, mm -hmm. but I have been shaped all the time and the kind of tricks that mm. psychologists are able to yeah. recognize. So I've got a real <laughs> skepticism about yeah. what my agency actually is. Yeah. And I have very little understanding of how, in fact, God works. So exactly. compatibilism yeah. is kind of like punting. I, yeah. <laughs> I, I read the Bible and I, I fully endorse the fact that we are responsible for our decisions. Mm, and exactly. yeah. I can't help but live that way as yeah. if I'm responsible for my decisions. On the other yeah. hand, there is so much that, that I don't, I don't mm. choose. It's all mm. part of this stream of history that, that I am a part of. So I, yeah. and you know, I've heard Tim Keller wrestle with this a number of times on various videos and, and I like his answer. You know, people say, well, Augustine and Calvin, one of the things that, so it's so funny because Jonathan Peugeot with his, his conversation with rebel wisdom, you know, mentioned Calvinists in this sneer and I just laugh and C.S. Lewis has some sneers about Calvinists too. You know, they're, they're so regularly maligned, but I don't take it personally. <laughs> But, you know, at the same time, Calvin did not invent the double predestination. Well, that might have been his lawyer side, you know, doubling down on that. But Luther, you know, mm. Roman Catholics, Orthodox, I mean, mm. it's simply a function of, of both Old Testament narrative and, and, and Pauline epistles and, mm. and Johannine epistles. So, mm. you know, and, and the Gospel of John. So, you know... The Bible wants to say God is in control and he's sovereign and we have real agency. And so yeah, that's exactly. what I tell people. And when they say, well, get detailed. I said, I can't get detailed. I can't yeah. even know what I'm doing. And, you know, yeah. I know I'm responsible and I have to exercise responsibility. So, yeah, yeah, no, no that's exactly, that's pr pretty much where, where I land. Like I can, I can't, you know, I've heard arguments for open theism and stuff. And it's, I just go, yeah, I look at that doesn't, you know, it, it, you know, it, it doesn't sort of ring true to me. Um, I, and, you know, the, the opposite sort of um, hard determinism, if you like, you know, that doesn't sort of, that doesn't seem ring true either. And so I sort of end up in, in this sort of middle ground going, look, I, I'm sort of open, you know, God can have as much, determinism as he wants um from my you know honestly it's 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 up to him um from my perspective you know i'm going to try to make good choices in the understanding that you know as far as i can tell from my perspective no my limited perspective you know i've got some agency and so to to what degree that is is 
is a product of the environment around me, you know, what I ate for breakfast, you know, you know, what I learned yesterday, you know, millions of factors, you know, there's, I know I'm, I'm biased, I'm influenced. Um, but, you know, as much as I can, I'm going to try and make good choices and sort of, you know, that's sort of, sort of where I, where I end up. Um, and I sort of, you know, I, I call that compatibilism. Um, I got, some people say that that's not a, a strict enough definition of compatibilism, but it's sort of like, well, you know, that's sort of where I'm in the middle. Like, yeah, I can, you know, you can, people make arguments for open tears and you go, oh yeah, you know, I can see that, you know, there's, you know, you want, you want to make sure free will isn't sort of, you know, squashed in any sense. And, and, you know, you, you, yeah, you know, that's sort of where I end up in the middle. Um, and uh, that sort of makes sense. Um, I also wanted to know what your what your thoughts on synchronicity are. Like, um, is that the same as as providence, or do you think it's is it like the way I sort of I don't know. I just feel and is it is that related to the way? So this is look, thinking about your video of the dimensions. So you talk about the, you know the one dimension, two dimension, three dimension. You sort of you explore that and so sort because of, one of the things I've been wrestling with is how God interacts with you. Like, I think it seems that he doesn't often interact with you through your five senses. So, you know, I don't often hear audible sort of, you know, a booming voice coming through to me. I, I don't see God walk by, at least not that I comprehend. You know, I don't smell God. I don't taste God. But at the same time, the Bible talks about, you know, taste and see that the Lord is good, you know, um, uh, you know, there's a few verses. Um, yeah. I think there's one in Peter as well. Um, but there's a few sort of verses about experiencing God and sort of like, well, how do we experience God if we're not experiencing God through our five senses often? You know, is it something where we experience God through, you know, providential or um, synchronistic events, you know, um, or do you experience God through your mind? Is that how God interacts with you through dreams or just, you know, an idea popping into your head which seemingly out of nowhere. You know, what's what's your thoughts on synchronicity? Do you like to use that word or do you feel that it's a bit too psychological or uh, I, I'm not I'm not I'm not really sure exactly what the word means. I was reading some Jung and it popped out of my mouth and I, it might have been you that called me on it says, well it should probably say Providence instead of saying <laughs> I felt kind of bad. I again, I watched the David Fuller Jonathan Peugeot conversation, and and David had emailed me and said, "What should I talk to Jonathan about?" I said, "Ask him about Jung. See how that goes." And <laughs> and um, I I my answer, you know, I haven't read near enough Jung to to comment on it, but I do notice mm-hmm. that for for those who have um, been influenced by Jung, that's a word that they prefer. I you know, again, I think the the reformed word is is providence. Mm. But how, you know, I, uh, Len Vanderzee, I should probably keep the books that I grabbed here. I just redid my office. I'll have to find, I'll have to find, oh, he's over in the CRC section. Um, Len Vanderzee wrote a, he's a CRC pastor. He wrote a book about um, basically sacramentalism. And because mm-hmm. he was wrestling with what John Calvin said about the Lord's Supper. And, mm-hmm. and Calvin, you know, I think there are a lot of reformed people that are Zwinglian when they come to the table. And so, and so Len earlier in his ministry was wrestling with this and, and so did a deep dive. Calvin, you know, Calvin and Luther both knew the church fathers well and appealed Mm. to them often. Mm. Now, now how does God communicate with us? I, when I look at how he introduces himself to Isaiah when he comes into the temple, they, you know, holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. So, you know, holy, holy, holy is far off. The earth is full of his glory. And so, you know, and I get some of this from Lewis and Augustine. You know, if you read Augustine's confession, oh, what a book, you know, Augustine is, you know, getting into detail about, you know, lustily nursing at his mother's breast and, and, you know, God being there and, you know, working through the morality of his infant self nursing. But, but God, God comes to us through the air we breathe and through the Mm -hmm. the gifts he gives us. I mean, this, this, this earth is a gift. And so, Mm -hmm. um, 
God, God comes to us close, you know, that God comes to us through, I have a bad habit of not finishing my sentence, but only finishing them in my head. Um, <laughs> I'm following you. God comes to us through all of this stuff and through each other. Mm. And this to me gets into questions of what will, what will the next age be like? And mm. thinking again about C.S. Lewis and the last battle. Mm. I, I think a lot of, again, people who are kind of overly looking at God aspect two say, well, I'll see, you know, God will be a glowy thing and Jesus will be there. Well, of course Jesus will be there, but God will be there. But what will be, we be doing in the new heavens and the new earth? God mm. will, will be fully expressing himself through that glory as well. And mm. so when we are, you know, in nature, we are, we are seeing, we are seeing God. Now God is, God is wearing the clothing, the glorious clothing of his creation. But mm. as the Belgic confession said, he's revealing himself in, in book number one in that yeah. way. Mm. And so I, I know many people who have had, um, you know, who have at moments in their life heard an audible voice. If mm. you ever want a good read by Andy Crouch, read a testimony in reverse. The one mm. time God spoke to him and yeah. God told him what he didn't want to hear, which to me is <laughs> about the most, I, when, a, when people who are more given to Pentecostalism, you know, God is always showing up in all the ways they want him to. I kind of think, eh. mm. <laughs> there's a reason they killed Jesus. He ticked people off. And this is, mm. you know, this is not, it's not that God is obnoxious. It's that we are stubborn rebels. And mm. so I, I think that's, that's the whole question about, you know, about election too. God moves mm. through history. And again, I like the mm. author metaphor. Yeah. Now, to yeah. what degree does, when Tolkien is writing about Frodo, to what degree is Frodo separate from Tolkien? And, mm. and I, I'm, I've never written fiction, but mm. listening to fiction writers, their characters take on a life of their mm -hmm. own. And yeah. Dorothy see, Sayers, go ahead. You, did you see um, Jordan Peterson's Q and A um, that he did like yesterday? I think it was. Yeah. Um, so he was talking about that. You know, characters. You know, a good author allows the character to, you know to have a life of its own almost. So it's sort of this interaction. It's sort of almost the dialogue between, you know, Tolkien and Frodo, that Frodo sort of takes on a, some sort of agency himself, which is, you know, very bizarre, even though it's all in Tolkien's head. It's not, it's more than that. That's right. Um, mm. Sorry, you're saying about Dorothy Sayers? No, yeah, yeah, I think this, uh, Dorothy Sayers is the same way. She, in fact, mm. fell so in love with one of her characters, she decided to write herself into the novel. Mm. so that she could meet her character. And of course, <laughs> D.S. Lewis and Tim Keller really lean on this because Keller mm. is a huge Lewis fan. And yeah. So. yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, no, I think that that, that, is, that is helpful. Um, yeah, that to be, uh, to be believable, I guess, the characters need to be not just, you know, if you, if you feel that the character's just being controlled by the, the author or the narrator, then it's sort of like, yeah, meh, you know, whereas if, if they sort of start having a life of their own, then, um, then they're a lot more realistic. And I guess you're seeing that in a different sense with, with computer games. Not that I play many computer games anymore, but I can, I've, you know, I, I observe it from, from the side. You know, you, you start to see how, you know, computer games are sort of developing a life of their own um, and that people are sort of, you know, one of the joys is to actually go into a story, into a world, into a, a believable world where things aren't just being controlled by, you know, a procedural kind of, you know, do, 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 you know, the robots that you're interacting with, but these little other little characters have artificial intelligence and that they do their own thing, you know, you know, independent from the original programmers so you know and that that's very fascinating how they yes they've been programmed by a author but they've also got their own agency 
um, which is is very interesting how that's all developing at a great one, rate. One interesting question might be, can we surprise God? Now, now on one hand, you'd say, oh, no. But <laughs> on the other hand, you would think that God would be the kind of author or programmer, those are obviously metaphors that we can attach mm. to, that could be yeah. so excellent because part mm. of delight is surprise. Mm. And, mm. you know, you read, for example, you know, Abraham and Isaac, the sacrifice of Isaac, that story, the, the, the mm. climax of that story is God saying, now I know, you know, mm. the, the Hebrews, the Hebrew scribes, mm. I, the Bible project has it nailed. They are geniuses. I mean, mm. And, mm. and right there, what did God not know? We can't answer these questions, but there <laughs> it is in the text. Now yeah. I know. And in, for example, mm. I remember when I was in seminary learning Hebrew, one of the, the first books that we read in, in the Bible in Hebrew was the book of Jonah. It's got a limited mm -hmm. vocabulary. It's a short book. And I remember mm -hmm. just reading along and, you know, you're doing kind of the wooden trans, translation in your head because you don't know anything. And, and you're reading along and you read. And I read, and God repented of the evil he was about to do. And it's like, <laughs> what? I'm, I'm from a tradition that majors in systematic theology. What do you mean? God repented of the evil he was about to do. And, mm. and so I think if, if God is going to delight in his creation mm. and delight mm. in us as his creatures, so on mm. one hand, we say, can we surprise God? No, of course not. On the other hand, could God make a world in which within proper boundaries, we mm. can surprise him? And I would say, mm. I bet you he can. Mm. <laughs> and I yeah. bet he wants to, because mm. again, if you read the Bible, especially the Old Testament, I love the Old Testament, I, the, you, you get the sense that he is delighting in us and he's crushed by our decisions. I mean, mm. the God of the God of the Old Testament is not the unmoved mover. He is a mm. passionate, engaged, involved mm. God, so much so that he is offensive to many. But mm. I find that delightful. Mm. Yeah, yeah, totally. Yeah, no, it's 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 yeah, you know, to what degree does God, you know, create a, a space, you know pulls himself back to allow that's right you know some things things to evolve uh, evolve you know to 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 come out we do that uh, with our children you yeah know, well that's two, we pull back a little when they're 18 mm. it's like you want to go to santa cruz yeah <laughs> okay <laughs> maybe it'll be great i don't know i'm not god so <laughs> yeah but we pull yeah. back and mm. you know these are the the it's you know, in the Old Testament, you can get a sense of, you know, there's hinting at, the, in, in Hosea, for example, God is talking about Ephraim, his son. But the New Testament, I was in a synagogue for a bar mitzvah, and I heard the rabbi talking about God as father, and I thought, you're sneaking some Jesus in there. I just know it. Because in Islam, you wouldn't talk that way. Yeah. It's hinted at in the Old Testament. But Jesus just takes that metaphor and works it. Yeah, I was just reading through John recently, and it, it's 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 sort of like no, no offense. It's sort of almost like a recorded message. It like it's like, and just so you know, you know, I'm interacting with the Father here, and right. if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. If you've seen the Father, you know, he's it, just he just on and on and on and on and on about um, his relationship with the Father. That he's you know doing what the Father wants. He's speaking what the Father wants. He's you know interacting. Like it's just, it's just constant. It's just, it's sort of like the background sort of thing which is going on. It's like you, you, you can't miss it. <laughs> like it's just like That's, you, know. you can't miss it. It's, no. And and at the same time, it's in John, and of course, John is probably the most debated of the Gospels because mm. Jesus is so divine in John. Whereas mm. I believe he is in all the other four too. But it's mm. you have to read it more carefully. Mm. But John, it's full and it's rich. It's just, I am the good shepherd. I yeah. am, <laughs> so, you know, I, I am, you know, yeah. we know what that means. Yeah, for, for sure. For sure. Yeah. And, you know, even, I think he, even when he was talking to Pilate, like he just keeps, he just keeps on saying it. Yeah. And it's just like, <laughs> you can't miss it. No. And, um, <laughs> and, you know, the reaction of the, you know, the, the Jews around him, you know, 
picking up stones. They're just like, nah, you know, we understand what you mean. <laughs> you know, yeah. Yeah. you know, we're not, we, we, we get what you're putting down. Um, yeah. You mentioned the Bible project there. Um, yeah. You um, do you listen to their podcasts or just their videos or both? I haven't I haven't listened to their podcast much. Uh, not that I don't like it. It's just it hasn't. I've got so much stuff to listen to now. And back when my kids were going to school locally here, I had a lot more car time, and I don't have mm-hmm. as much car time, so I'm I can't get as through as much listening stuff. So, but <laughs> no, I really like the I really like the Bible Project guys and the work that they do. It's it's just stellar. Yeah, yeah, no, I, I, um, I reckon I'd probably say they're probably my favourite podcast at um, for probably the last. Well, for they've always been in the top couple, and um, I just yeah, I really like the interaction between Tim and John. That like, you know, Tim sort of, you know, sort of works through things methodically, and John is always there asking the questions I would be asking. <laughs> sort of like, and goes, oh, but what about this? And he's always sort of, ah, I, I just really like that sort of interaction where John just asks honest questions. You know, he's like, oh, I'm a bit uncomfortable with what you said there, Tim. You know, <laughs> you know, when I was growing up, you know, and uh, yeah, I just love it. It's um, and um, interestingly enough, um and this is one, I think I commented on one of your YouTube things, like they are doing a series on God, you know, so they've just started a podcast series on God and they're working on a video on God. And so, you know, here I am, I've been just listening to a couple of hours of, you know, talking about Elohim and um, El and, you know, Yahweh. And, you know, they've just been, I've just had hours of talking, um, of listening to their podcast about God. And then I, you know, sit down and watch a video and you're talking about God. And I'm just like, what's going on? You know, it's just, you know, one of those moments where, you know, you're talking about God and, you know, well, and, and the reason you're talking about God is because, you know, Sam Harris and Jordan Peterson are talking about God. And obviously they're not, they're not listening to the Bible project. So, you know, it's in my mind, I'm like, why is, you know, Tim you know, and the Bible project, some, you know, they're talking about God and these guys are talking about God. Everyone's talking about God. Well, in my little, you know, my little world and um you know it's yeah i I find i you know i'd call that i don't know either providential or synchronistic like it's 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 a it you know some people say oh just a coincidence but to me it's like "Mm, yeah it's it feels a lot more than just a coincidence that you know that this topic is in forefront of my mind at the moment um it feels like there's 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 something more going on there um that this topic um is is sort of on the floor if you if you like um, well and, and and you know there's i think christians you know in the church often have a sense that we often we often feel like we're we're one generation away from extinction <laughs> but here's the thing this this is i think the standard situation and you know the thing that the thing that grabbed my attention about Jordan Peterson was there were there seemed to be a number of there seemed to be a number of dead ends and some of those dead ends were kind of the the atheist people were leaving the faith becoming atheists didn't seem to be coming back uh, another was kind of the new age exit people were leaving the faith going into more new age things and just kept Mm. keep going out. And so you watching, and I live in Northern California, so we've got a lot of both of those. Mm. And so you watch that happen and you just think, you know, what's well, you know, Christianity, it's going to be, it's going to do fine in Africa and Asia because it's growing like crazy there. But what about here? And then Peterson comes along and atheists are saying, I'm not so sure. And, and others who have been into some other things begin to say, I'm a little curious about this Bible. And mm, to me, it mm. just says, you know, <laughs> God does what he wants. And we are, yeah. we have such, we have mm. so little faith. We, mm. we trust mm. in ourselves mm. so much more than we trust in him. And, and for mm. me, I mean, this, I'm a pastor of a very small church, you know, I'm a pastor about the size church yours are, yours mm. is and many of our members are older. And, you know, mm. for a while, a few years ago, I had a nice group of young, 
younger people. And it was like, oh, good. We've, I've got the replacement generation. I, I'm not going to be the caretaker of the – I'm not going to be the last one to lock the door here. And then just a whole bunch of people got jobs and stuff. They all moved away. I was like, ah, I am yeah. going to be the one to lock the door. <laughs> But at the same time, I think, you know, I ask how God talks to me. God talks to me through that and just says to me, Mm. you don't really trust me, do you? You trust in yourself. You trust, you Mm. trust in your intelligence. You trust in your, you know, your, your, your laughable moral goodness. You trust in, Mm. you trust in yourself. You don't really trust me. And that's, that's Mm. the foundation of the Christian life. And I can't Mm. get it right. So, Mm. Mm. Yeah, well, that's something. Yeah, see, I, 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 yeah, even with, yeah, I trust is something is is hard. Um, it's yeah, I think trust, being able to trust, even trusting yourself. Like, see, I don't have a huge amount of confidence in my own ability either, if I'm honest with myself. Um, you know, I, I, I think. Yeah, it's yeah, it's it's hard to know who to trust in in many ways. Like I, I don't have a huge amount of confidence in my my own abilities, um, and but at the same time, uh, you know, I, yeah, I struggle to to trust God. Sometimes it's it's hard to know where He's going, um, and I, I guess it, it it comes. You know, we live in a society which keeps saying, you know, the five senses. You know, five senses. If you can't if you can't see it with your five senses. You know, if you can't experience it with your five senses, then it's not there. You know, that's the message we keep getting. Although, you know, when you stop to think, um, you go, well, if I say frog, something comes into your head, you know, and that, you know, I can't see that, I can't hear it. You know, you can't get a probe and go, oh, yes, there's a frog. But, you know, it's got a bent, you know, it's real in the sense that, you know, we can, now that we're talking about a frog, we can interact with that. We can talk about, well, if there's two frogs and suddenly in your mind, you've got something and you can interact with them and, you know, you've got this virtual thing happening in your head. And so there's, you know, when you stop and actually sort of contemplate, you go, well, actually, and then, you know, there's emotions and love and other, you know, you've got the mind, other non-material things. And so, you know, when you actually stop, but there's, yeah, you're always... You know, it, it's it's hard because you it's this continual sort of wrestle where you, you're getting one message, sort of saying, "Well, you know, God can't exist because you haven't, you know, you haven't seen Him today." You know, and but on the other hand, when you actually stop and go, "Well, Christians actually think that there's you know more than just what you can physically see," and so you've got this constant sort of um, back and forth, I guess, um, which you know. I think that's very true. And for actually this whole Jordan Peterson project for me has been very good for that. Before that, I was, I'd read C.S. Lewis's miracles about twice a year because when I, when I'd find myself sliding down again, we're, we're, we believe in groups and you're immersed in a, you're immersed in a culture that's shaping you in a certain way. And so if you want to believe, if you want to believe in a way other than the bubble you're living within, you're going mm. to have to find others to live with. And sometimes mm. the best you can mm. do is a dead person via a book. And yeah. so for me, C.S. Lewis was someone that I would almost constantly read because mm. if I didn't, I would find when I'd start to get materialistic, well, suddenly a lot of my life decisions look really bad. You know, <laughs> I, I, you know, I could have made a lot more money being an engineer. And if I had made more money, I could have had mm-hmm. better vacations and nicer cars. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. I wouldn't have to deal with all these homeless people and mentally ill mm-hmm. people. And mm-hmm. I, I wouldn't have to do any of that. And so mm-hmm. when I want to, when I want to inhabit Jesus world, I need to, I need to live in Jesus world. And that means, you know, continuing to be immersed, not just in terms of devotions in the Bible, but also with other Christians mm, and, yeah. and Christians like C.S. Lewis and, and Tim Keller. And, yeah. And so that's, I, people will ask me, I just got another note today from someone who's saying, you know, my church, my church is very unhelpful to me. Do I really need a church? 
And I, I always want to say, I say, you, you cannot be a Christian alone. You will mm. not last. God gives us the church. And you might yeah. need to find another church, but you need a church if you're going to actually endure. Yeah. Yeah. No, I've, I've always, um, well, yeah, fortunately, you know, you know, my parents took me to church and I, I could see the benefit of, of, of being in a, in a Christian community um, and, you know, being encouraged by, you know, going to church um, and interacting with other Christians. Um, uh, yeah. I think that's essential. Like, it, you know, if you, if you just go it alone, it's, it's very, very hard. You know, you're, you're almost, in, you know, very, very difficult just to, to sort of go it alone. Um, you know, we're part of a, meant to be part of a body and you know, part of a, um, you know, church also gives you the opportunity to, you know, benefit other people. Um, so it's sort of a two-way street. It's, it's um, and, you know, and by serving others, then that actually helps shape you as well. It, it's, it's, it's a um, mutually beneficial thing. Yeah. Um, even though, you know, at times it's, it's hard. Um, it's, uh, it's, it's not, it's not always easy to, to do. <laughs> no, <laughs> people are a mess and yeah yeah ourselves and, included know, are you know it's you put it's same with marriage it's same with family same with church mm, people are a mess yeah. relationships um, are hard they, yeah. they're hard work um yep. Yep. They, they are yeah no yeah, totally um yeah um well, we've, we've been going about an hour i don't know if you have any 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 last questions that you just got to get in <laughs> yeah and no, i will uh, yeah I, I after watching i've probably watched probably a dozen of your videos now i think um and so you know i just um yeah i thought it'd be good to 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 have a, to talk to you because you know your um yeah, I'm interested in 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 your reflections on 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 God and and in how we interact with God and um, uh, also I've been interested in the way you've been following Jordan Peterson and stuff and so it's been been helpful um, and so I thought you know before you get too popular um, I better you know connect and um, yeah no it's it's been it's been good um, this this could this could this could all go away the <laughs> very fickle place now i and i you know i i mean i when my first videos i was very serious when i told people i could stop making videos about jordan peterson tomorrow if mm. i kind of get the sense that i've kind of gotten to the bottom of it mm. then i'll probably get interested in something else and move on will i do youtubes mm. of it i don't know i never did this before mm. But I was, I was interested listening to the um, question and answer that he released yesterday, mm. listening to the timing of his biblical series. When, yeah. when he was in Sacramento, he said November, and I assumed, okay, maybe that's November 2018. But listening yeah. to what he said, it sounded like, you know, fall 2019. And I thought, mm. ooh, that's going to be hard because I'll tell you, yeah. With all the people I talk to, listening to them, there are a lot of people that they've heard all of this stuff mm -hmm. before and they're just mm. waiting for Exodus. And it's like, dude, don't try and make us wait another year. Yeah. You yeah, might no. miss your moment. Yeah, I was disappointed to, to hear that, that he um, pushed the Exodus series back. Um, it's, yeah, that, that was that was disappointing. Like I was, I was hoping that it was going to be sooner than later. Um, and you know, I think, if, yeah, look, I guess he feels he's on a good thing at the moment with his, with his book tour. And so, you know, that's been, you know, getting a lot of positive feedback from that, I guess. Um, you know, it's something obviously he loves interacting those lectures. He, you know, he really enjoys it, but it, I don't think he, um, he says that he's reading all the time, which is great, but I think the actual challenge of the biblical series, I think was something which, you know, it was stretching him yeah. like, you know, doing Genesis was stretching him. Yeah. Um, and I, I think that was actually really good and healthy. Yeah. Um, and so 
yeah, I, I'd like to see him stretched again with 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 Exodus. Well, you know, we've got to get through the whole Bible. He needs. He hasn't even got <laughs> the new. Otherwise, I'm, I'm not going to get to see new the New Testament at this point. Um, Does he know what's ahead of him? <laughs> yeah, like you've got Leviticus coming up and Numbers and Deuteronomy, and you have yeah. the prophets. Yeah. Oh. So he, he really needs to get cracking um, and, you know, just just knock it up the priority and just sort of, you know, be working on it. Um, but, yeah. I think, that's, I think you're right. And I think, you know, with these lectures that he's doing, so I saw him when he was in Sacramento and it sounds mm-hmm. like he's coming back to Australia. I may be coming. I, I'm talking to a guy. I may come to Australia myself, which would, I've never mm-hmm. been to Australia. Love to get out there. But. But, you know, so we came to Sacramento and that was awesome. But I think you're right. The Sam Harris stuff, I think, was good. He's, mm. If he just keeps doing the, the, book, the book series, I think, I don't know. I don't, I don't know where this will all go. He'll give me lots of time to catch up on my commentary series. But <laughs> I, think, yeah. I think a lot of the hardcore people will kind of, Mm. riff they won't know what to do because because a lot of them have been treading water for a while now yeah yeah look i i have been probably since oh, march so you know you know quite a few months now um you know that he's he fortunately you know he's released i haven't watched it yet but you know he released the a bbc one where he interacts with but you know again it, he's not going to be stretched on a bbc interview like he's not so, you know, he, he gets a little bit stretched, you know, when he say with Russell Brand or, um, you know, he or Jonathan Pajot. And there's a few people who, who could stretch him a little bit. But, you know, this is, he's only getting stretched a little bit in those kind of interviews. And even with Sam Harris and stuff, it's, it's, it's when he has to try to make sense of, I think the Biblical Extra series, really, that's when he... Um, is being stretched the most. And so I, I think, yeah, anyway, I, I, yeah, it's, yeah, I, I think it's, it, it's beneficial for, for him um, and, and, and subsequently everyone else um, to, to continue on with the, the biblical lecture series. Cause I think that that is really important that that's, that's yeah. And I think a lot of his, I think, yeah, I think a lot of people, have become interested in him because of the Genesis. You know, I think his Genesis first one introduction to God video, I still think, I think it's still that's one of the most highly watched videos yeah. out of all his videos. Yeah. yeah. And I think that says something. I think it's, it's saying people are actually interested in, in what you're doing here. Um, yeah. You know, you, you know, the, your 12 rules for life got, you know, um, you know, number one and, you know, great. It's awesome. Great. But yeah, I, th- I think that's, that's one level. I think the, the, the biblical lecture series is, is another level of, of, and it's a different thing, which I think is, yeah, a lot of, I think quite a few, uh, yeah, a lot of Christians and even non-Christians, you know, he's filling out lecture theaters with a whole range of people, which is you know bizarre. Um, but I think there's there's a, a hole there. There's a missing, um, um, yeah, missing sort of thing, which he's uniquely feeling in in that. Um, yeah. So anyway, it'll be interesting to to see whether whether he he sticks to his his schedule or because he's 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 now going to write the second book, um, yeah. twelve more, more rules, um, and so that's going to take his headspace for for four months. Well, and, yeah, I got 613 from the Torah, so, you know, mm. got a lot of Bible <laughs> and a lot of rules to go. <laughs> yeah, well, see, that's the thing. I, I reckon some of the good bits of 12 Rules for Life came out of his biblical lecture series. Like, you know, some of the bits in there yeah. actually came out of the... And so, t- to be honest, I wouldn't be writing his second book until he's done his Exodus series. Like, I'd do it the other way around. Yeah. I'd do the Exodus series and then do your second book because you're going to learn some things in that Exodus series, which will be fresh and, you know, 
into your second book will actually enrich that second book a lot. So yeah. if, if I was him, I'd be doing it the other way around. I'd be doing lecture, Exodus series first and then the book. And then that, that will actually make that book a lot more interesting. Yeah. Um, but I, anyway. I agree. <laughs> One of the things you learn as a preacher, you know, I've been in this church over 20 years now. You, you use the depth of the Bible to, to be able to keep going. Mm. And, and I think, you know, that's what, I mean, even 15, 15 talks on Genesis, he just touched the mm. surface on a lot mm. of things. And, yeah. Yeah. you know, Exodus, the first half of Exodus up to, you know, chapter, chapter 25, you start getting into the, the law and the tabernacle and all of those things. So, and there's mm. a lot of really interesting material that he should be should have a lot mm. of fun with in Exodus. And he, he touched mm. on it a little bit with his Easter stuff, but I think you're dead on right. If he, mm. I, I don't know what happens to whatever, you know, and, and me as someone who's doing the meetups and we're, we're going to have meetup 12. Um, and it's, I don't know. He's, he's, I, I agree with you hundred percent. He should, I think he mm. should, I think he should look at these biblical series as a staple, even if he only did, you know, six a year in, you know, mm. one every other month in 2018, that mm. would keep him fresh. So, mm. you know, mm. what's he, what's he going to do now for conversations? He had his little sparring with, with uh, Harris and those videos are late and coming. And many of us who have listened to the bootlegs, mm. I'll go through them again, but I've, you know, I think gotten this, the things out of them. Hmm. So, I don't know. I don't know. Hmm. I don't, I think you're right. I don't think Harris, it's not the right kind of pushing. Hmm. Uh, maybe yeah. we're both Christians. So maybe this, is, <laughs> maybe this biased. is our bias in this. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Well, see, that's the thing with the Bible project. Um, when, when in particularly the podcast, the podcast really pick it up, you know, they'll talk for hours and hours and hours and hours about, you know, they talked for hours and hours and hours and hours about, exile you know just one one theme theme of exile in the bible they 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 would have done i don't know half a dozen hour you know there's six hours just talking about the exile and they're, they're going to do a series on the on god which will be you know again hours and hours and hours yeah. and it's sort of like jordan peterson you should be listening to the bible project podcast just to get an idea of just how deep deep you can dig in these things. Yes. You know, the Bible hub, you know, yeah, that's good. But that's, that's not, that's not, that's not, there are better com commentaries. There are, it, it goes deeper than that. Like, yeah, exactly. This is like, a fraction of what there is. We, yeah. Been, like, Oh no, I didn't Bible hub. I nothing against Bible hub, but at this it, level, uh, although, yeah. you know, all, all fairness, um, I can't forget his name right now but you know he, he has read some good people and he's and i know through this he's 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 gotten a lot more sources mm. and i but i remember when he was doing the bit the genesis thing i'm thinking like yeah you're gonna talk about the bible huh and you're gonna exhaust that i mean and you didn't even go into abraham oh there's just the you, mm. there's just so much mm. Yeah, no, just just listening to the, the Bible project, I just go, man, I wish Jordan Pearson would listen to some of this because there's there's he could just bring out even more stuff. Like there's just the, the depth. Yes, he's he's there's just even more. Basically, as you say, it's it's almost well, it probably is. Uh, and he, he got a sort of inkling of that of the depth. You know, he says you know it's it's sort of inexhaustible, um, the Bible. But you you sort of go okay. Now that you've noticed that it's inexhaustible, you know, dive deeper, you know, <laughs> get exhausting now. Come on. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, go, go further, you know, read more, more commentaries, more, read more. And, um, you know, there's, 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 a, there's even more to the, you know, Cain and Abel story, you know, yes, you brought, you know, you brought out a lot of good stuff, but, you know, again, you're still scratching the surface, you know, yeah. you know, go deeper, go further. Um, and, um, and the more, yeah. the more we wait for Exodus, the higher the anticipation, the almost certainty of disappointment. 
Mm. Um, yeah. So, but, you, but we'll, we'll, you know, and, and again, we don't know, we don't know what's going to happen with Peterson in terms of mm. what, what more. So some, one of the guys in my meetup, he listens to, he works in IT and he listens to university lectures just all the time. And so he, he started listening to Peterson in 2013. And so mm. at the last meetup, somebody asked him, so is, so are you hearing new stuff out of Peterson? And he's kind of like, um, I, he says, I can't talk about the theological stuff because I don't have an ear for that. But in terms of the psychological stuff and the mythology stuff, it's, it's still maps of meaning. And mm. just like you say, he needs something to push him. And mm. if he wants to have a big, heavy rock to push uphill, well, try the Bible. Try the Bible. Uh, that's big yeah. enough and heavy enough for anyone. So Yeah, totally, totally. Well, you, you know, I've, I've got a bit of hope in the fact that um, he still is interacting a fair bit with Jonathan Pajot. Like that to me is a, that's a positive sign that he, he's still, um, you know, not wanting to put a huge burden on Jonathan Pajot of the hopes of mankind, but um, you know, it, it, <laughs> it's, um, you know, it, it, that, that, that is good that he's, because, you know, Jonathan Pajot will, will push him a bit, but, you know, it, he needs to take it even more seriously, um, you know, if he, if, um, I think at least. But no, I anyway, um, I, I, would, I would hopefully, like I had a, I had a whole list of, of, um, of things which, all, all these questions, which quite a few we, we touched on, but, you know, they're, yeah, at some stage, I know you're, you're going on vacation or going on holiday, which sounds good. Um, hopefully at, at some stage down the track, um, you know, we can have another, another chat. Um, Sounds good. Sounds yeah. Good. No, cause I, I love talking. I love, um, you know, I've, I'm passionate about theology, um, particularly how it interacts with everyday life as opposed to just abstract theology. Like, um, you know, I, I'm interested in how, it, yeah, it actually, it actually, rubber hitting the road kind of um, that that's very of, of great in interest, how it actually influences the way you live and stuff. Um, so yeah, there's, there's lots more, lots more that we could talk about. Um, one, of the things, one of the things I'm thinking about doing is doing sort of online meetups. There'll mm. probably be maybe four of us because you don't want too many. And mm. then, and then that way, because the, my, my in-person meetup here in Sacramento, we just had 25 last Sunday, uh, mm -hmm. 12 new people. Wow. Uh, which means that we've probably had another 20 people who have been at least once, many of them multiple times. So mm -hmm. uh, I'm, I'm working to try and figure out how to manage that and help mm -hmm. some other people in some other cities in Sacramento start meetups. But I, I'm, I'm, because there's a real there's a real need to be able to talk about this with someone. Mm. Yeah, 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 yeah. Just well, it's, what we need to do to thinking to grow. Yeah, and making sense of it, and sort of trying to work out what you actually think about it. You know, you, as one of the things John P says, you know, by talking you're actually thinking, and I think that's very true. That yep. it's yep. you know when you're having a conversation with somebody, you sort of you're figuring out what you actually think about it. Um, and uh, yeah, so yeah, I think t talking is, is very helpful. Um, mm. excellent. Well, thank you very much for your time. I appreciate that. Um, well, thank you. It's, um, good to, to talk in, in person. Well, almost in person. Almost um, in person. Well, maybe, maybe if hopefully. I, I'd, I'd love to see Tasmania someday. So who knows? Maybe I'll get to yeah. Tasmania someday. It's a, but even just the name. I know for a lot of Americans, a lot of people in the world, California, well, once you live here for 20 years, it's no longer quite so exotic, but Tasmania. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And no, I look, we'd, we'd love to have you. It'd be, um, it'd be fantastic to, uh, if you can get out here, it'd be, it'd be good. All right. Um, mm. well, Excellent. Thank you, Alex. You too. See you you enjoy. You enjoy. Let's see. Today you enjoy Wednesday. I'll 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 be at Wednesday tomorrow. <laughs> You'll catch up eventually. <laughs> I'll catch up eventually. <laughs> yeah. Cool. All right. All right. See you then. Take care. Bye.